What's going on, guys? Dante562. It is finally official. I can finally say Adrian Broner will be fighting against Antonio DeMarco in November. This is an excellent matchup. This is a real fight. This is a this is a fight that will finally test Broner. And it will let us know if he if Broner is really serious. If he really is somewhat of the next Floyd Mayweather. If he really is somewhat of the next future pound for pound champion. Or has he just been all talk? But nevertheless, no matter what happens in November when he faces, you know, a very good challenger in Antonio DeMarco, we got to give Broner a lot of credit because Broner, he is not swaying away from what this sport is all about. And this sport is all about being the best. Okay? Of course, this sport is about being, you know, it's a prize it's a prize fight. Of course, it's about capturing a prize. Of course, it's about trying to become wealthy. But the main thing is about being the best fighter in the world. Okay? And Adrian Broner, he is not trying to avoid the speed bumps. He going over all the speed bumps. You feel me? What I mean by that is he believes in himself. He believes that he could beat the best fighters in the world. You know, you guys already already heard me say this if you um subscribe to me that uh Broner, he already called out the best fighters. He called out Juan Marquez. He called out undefeated Brandon Rios. He called out Antonio DeMarco. Okay? He called all of these fighters out. Even some of them being, you know, a little bit uh bigger than him. He called them out. He's not doing the shit that Canelo Alvarez is doing, okay? Canelo Alvarez, 40-plus fights. To this day, he still hasn't fought a young, hungry guy who was considered the ring champion in his division, okay? He still hasn't done that yet. He's trying to, he's trying to avoid everybody in his whole division so that he can just land one fucking cash fight that he believes that he can win for sure, which is against Miguel Cotto. This is not what Adrian Broner is doing. Why I respect him. You know, you I hear a lot of people saying today, you know, boxing is not the same. Nobody wants to fight anybody. Everybody is trying to just land that one big money fight. And that's what I'm saying. Adrian Broner is not doing that. A Adrian Broner, he is not doing that. Antonio DeMarco is battle tested. DeMarco is considered the ring champion in the lightweight division. Okay? Broner, he just moved up to 135. He's fighting the best fighter at 135. And we already know that once he dominates 135, he's going to move up to 140. Okay? So we know that Adrian Broner is not trying to go out duck everybody for 40 fights just to try to land one big ass fight and then you say to yourself hey well shit I already made it to the big league so hey it doesn't matter if I lose I'm still about to get you know 20 million dollars or whatever so hell fuck it I don't care if I lose that's almost how how um it's perceived to me you know because if you you cannot duck people your entire career. See, the thing is, everyone has ducked someone in their career before. Everyone has ducked someone. But it's all about the balance. The balance of your accomplishments versus who you avoided. Obviously, if you've avoided more people than you've actually fought, then that's what you will be remembered for. Okay? As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to someone like Canelo Alvarez, who had the, the audacity to say that I want to fight Miguel Cotto, even if Miguel Cotto loses, I want to fight Miguel Cotto. What kind of ignorant, ridiculous shit is this? 
What has this sport come to? To where you are such a fucking coward that you are sitting here saying that even if Cotto loses, you're going to fight him. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Canelo Alvarez is very hard to defend if you're a Canelo Alvarez fan. If Canelo Alvarez was in a court of law and he was a, a he was a murder suspect, it would be hard to defend him because the evidence is through the fucking roof. Okay? It's hard to defend someone like that when their DNA blood is all over the place. How do you defend someone like that? How do you say it wasn't him that did it? The, the, the evidence is ridiculous. And this is once again the case with Canelo Alvarez and Golden Boy saying that we want to fight Miguel Cotto. And we not, not we want to fight the winner of Cotto Trout. We want to fight Miguel Cotto, right? See, the reason why I say the evidence is through the roof, because I've... I've had messages sent to me where people were trying their best to defend Canelo. You know, I've had a couple people, believe it or not, who told me, man, Trout ain't shit. And Canelo is going to fight him next if if Trout beats Cotto. You know, everybody at first, they were saying Trout ain't shit. You know, Trout ain't shit. And that's the reason why Canelo Alvarez ain't fight, fighting him. But that didn't make sense because Matthew Hatton and, and fucking Miguel Cotto's brother, and all of these whack people that Canelo fought, they weren't shit either. And Canelo fought them, right? So we knew that that wasn't true. But now, now you know, that's even been debunked. You know, the fact that you guys thought or you guys wanted to believe that your guy did have that heart. And he was going to fight somebody like Trout eventually. No, he's not fighting Trout. He's not fighting Trout. And he said it himself. Even if Trout wins, that's more of a reason for us to run from him. This is the way Canelo and Golden Boy are looking at it. they like, shit. Well, if Trout beat Cotto, then I'm really glad we didn't fight that motherfucker because he's just as good as we thought he was, even better. Right? So that's what, you know, this is what Canelo is going to do. Canelo is going to keep fighting bums until he fucking can land that big ass ultimate prize. And then it's not even going to matter to him if he wins or loses anymore. Of course, he's going to want to win, but it's not going to matter. And I'm going to tell you right now, that strategy that he has is a losing strategy when it comes to legacy. His career will be looked at just like Oscar De La Hoya's career. Okay? And, you know, well, I'm not going to go there, but I'll just leave it at De La Hoya. You know, his career will be looked at like Oscar De La Hoya's career. Oscar De La Hoya will go down as pound for pound one of the richest, you know, boxers in the world. But he will not go down as pound for pound one of the greatest fighters of all time. Okay? And this is what Oscar De La Hoya is doing with Canelo. Oscar is living through Canelo. I was going to do a video on Oscar um, living through Canelo, but I'm just going to say this right now. Oscar is living through Canelo Alvarez. And Oscar De La Hoya is trying to avoid making the mistakes with Canelo that he did with his, in his own career. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, when he, like I said, when he moved up to the welterweight division, his career went south because he was fighting against better competition. He was fighting against a lot of American style, you know, fighters that, you know, had counter punching ability, boxing, could move around, ring generalship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Th those are the most difficult opponents to face. All right. And Oscar De La Hoya, he could not beat those fighters. And, um, you know, by the time he was in his early 30s, his career was already starting to decline. So Oscar De La Hoya, he's trying to avoid those type of fighters that gave him problems with Canelo Alvarez. That's what he's doing. All right. So anyway, that was my little segment on Canelo. Uh, let me get back to Adrian Broner against DeMarco. So this fight is going to be very, very good. Like I said before, Broner is doing something that a lot of fighters are not doing today. He's fighting the best. It's funny because when you look at how flashy, how flamboyant Broner is, you would think that he would be all talk. You would think that he would be all talk 
And and he you would think that he would be that type of Canelo Alvarez type of fighter. Talk all this shit and fight bums. But he's not doing that. Okay? He's not doing that. You know. So um now let me go ahead and get to my prediction. And it's gonna be a quick, easy prediction. You know, basically, you if you follow my videos, you already know my motto. And that is defense, as far as I'm concerned, my own opinion is the most important tool in your entire arsenal, okay? I personally believe, and like I said, I, I do train kids, you know, mainly my own kids, and I tell them all the time, your defense is the most important weapon that you are going to have. It has to be better than your offense. This is what I instill in my kids, all right? And my son, my son who's been doing it for a minute now, you know, my younger son, you know, he's practically undefeated. You know, he didn't already won national champions and he's only 11 years old. All right. A lot of a lot of, you know, kids that my son, my son, Remy fights. He you know, they're not used to seeing a kid that young bobbing and weaving, jumping back with counter punches. You know, a lot of kids that age, they're not used to seeing that because a lot of these amateur coaches, they just teach their kids to go in there and just throw a million punches. You know, it's. You know, it's somewhat of um, almost a misconception, but it is it is partially true when people say in the amateurs, it's all about throwing a lot of punches. It is about throwing a lot of punches, but those punches have to be landing on something. They got to at least be hitting gloves, you know, your arms, your body. They got to be touching something. But if you're throwing a million punches and you're not hitting nothing but air, you will not be effective. All right. My son, I've taught him how to be able to stand right in front of somebody, move his head, and, and land his own combinations. Okay? So enough about my, you know, my kid. And I talk mainly about my son because my older son, you know, he started to get a little bit lazy. You know, he used to be the one that was, you know, the, the prodigy and all that kind of stuff. But he got a little lazy. You know, so he went almost from like, you know, Michael Jackson of the family to Jermaine Jackson of the family. You feel me? But, you know, that's another story, you know. It's, he's still young, you know, he's wishy-washy, so he, he's going to decide if he wants to do it or not. I'm not going to force him to do it. He still has all the talent my younger son has, but, you know, that's up to him. So I'm sorry, guys, you know, me, me going off the subject, talking about other things, but I only brought that up because it has something to do with my prediction, which is defense, 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 all right? So because of defense, that the, because of the defense that Broner has, and because of the lack of defense that DeMarco has, I see this as an easy win for Broner, considering the fact that he is the real deal. Now, you know, like I said before, it could be possible that Broner's not the real deal. And it, it could be this is why this is such a great fight, because he is going to be tested. We are going to know after we are going to know after this fight if Broner is the real deal. This is the perfect uh, opponent that he needed to be in with to know if he was the real deal. He needed to be in there with a guy who had a little bit of boxing ability, a guy who has power, a guy who can take a good punch, a guy who is not going to stop fighting because he's afraid and intimidated, you know, which I, maybe I shouldn't even say that yet because I, I believe it or not, a lot of people have been intimidated when it comes to Adrian Broner. So, but, you know, but I don't believe that, uh, I don't believe that, uh, What's his name? Um, DeMarco will be intimidated. You know, when it comes to just breaking down this fight scientifically, DeMarco almost has zero chance because Adrian Broner, he's a way better boxer. He has a way better defense. He has just as much power as DeMarco, if not more. DeMarco, he showed a terrible defense against Linares in both of those fights. He showed terrible defense in all of his fights. He's a good boxer, but he gets hit all the time. Similar to um, Marquez in a way, but Marquez is a better counter punch, a better counter puncher. Marquez is a great counter puncher, but he gets hit like he's a brawler. And that's how DeMarco is. Great boxer, but gets hit like he's a brawler. A great boxer is supposed to have a great defense. You know, DeMarco, he got hit too much in the Linares fight. He got outboxed and beat the hell out of the hell out of in the Edwin Valero fight. And what was so interesting about that fight is Valero was 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 looked at 
in that fight as the brawler. And DeMarco was supposed to be the boxer. But Valero was chasing, uh, you know, DeMarco around the ring, outboxing him and out, you know, out fighting him. OK, that fight ended in a TKO. So, like I said, logically, uh, DeMarco really has no chance. But realistically, he has a very good chance because in boxing, one punch can change everything. and We all know that. And like I said, once again, we don't really know if Broner is the real deal yet until he passes this test. Like I said before, when I did my series of um, future pound for pound fighters that I believe to be eventually in the top three, uh, Broner, as you guys know, was one of those fighters, but he was one of the fighters in my top five that I criticized the most because I told you a lot of times the fighters that, that I look at as being future you know, dominant stars and dominant pound for pound fighters. Usually those fighters have a great amateur pedigree. Broner is one of the rare, you know, fighters that I like who his, his amateur pedigree is suspect. You know, I've been, I've been, um, you know, looking into it and, and, you know, to a little bit of my surprise, Adrian Broner, he, he wasn't really, really that successful as an amateur. You know, I was I was told that, uh, you know, he would he would always play second, you know, second or third in a lot of tournaments, a lot of major tournaments. But, you know, that's why that's why I'm kind of still I'm still I'm still questioning how good Broner is. And that's why I really, really like this fight, because we're going to get to see how good he is. We're going to get to see amateurs and the pros is, is totally different. You know, sometimes. Sometimes you could be a beast as an amateur and you could just, you know, get destroyed as a pro. Then it's vice versa. You know, so far, it, it, it seems that Broner is much better as a pro than he was as an amateur. So, like I said, we're going to get to see. I'm predicting Broner goes in here and, um, you know, he, he passes this test with flying colors. He looks impressive. I'm looking at him possibly stopping DeMarco um, some, somewhere between the sixth in the ninth round, you know, that's just, that's just my little shot, you know, maybe it'll come, maybe it'll come to fruition, maybe it won't, but that's how I see this fight, guys, all right, so um, that's all I got to say on this one, I'm on to the next one, y'all.